Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Welcome back to this uh, interview program here. Gilbert, always a pleasure to see you, mate. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. So, it's uh, you guys, uh, Paul Sahelian put out a news to uh, this morning. So, we wanted to really talk about it because investors may not understand fully. It needs some explanation. Um, so, maybe mm -hmm. we can just start off by this is a, sort of like a report of completing the flow test, right? At the uh, jazz stream mm -hmm. number one, appraised mm -hmm. well. And uh, let's start with the first point here in the news. He said, helium and, and associated gases flow to the surface naturally in a gas free gas phase. So why mm. is this uh, significant to the investors? Well, look, firstly, look, re really happy uh, to get the, the this announcement out. And, uh, you know, it is a significant milestone for the company. I personally am very pleased with what we've seen. And so are my colleagues. So uh, I think we had to, before I get to that question, is that really this is the first proper, uh, you know, helium well that's ever been drilled in the state of Minnesota. And, and to get this and, uh, you know, result is extremely pleasing. I mean, really what we were doing is going out there and replicating that original discovery, which is by chance back in 2011, when somebody was drilling for nickel and hit gas. So we replicated that and really was a, I guess you could say, a conservative approach drilling nearby, uh, going down to a similar depth. And uh, it's, it's really pleasing to see that uh, definitely it's, it's real uh, in, in uh, the first place, but then also to get that free gas phase. So, you know, now delving into your question, what does that mean? Is that um, before it's, it's uh, the gas, uh, the raw gas in the ground, in the reservoir there, it's naturally coming up to surface of its own accord. So uh, you find with, uh, you know, some other projects, it's not always the case is that uh, you know the, the gas uh, you know hasn't isn't under sufficient pressure that where you're getting the flow rate up to surface uh, and then also some instances you get it associated with water and you get this thing called fizz gas which is you know not ideal uh, so for us we don't have the water in there which is which is really key uh, we're getting gas coming up naturally to surface uh, and what that does is that really uh, helps with things like okay we, we we know that that you've got the positive flow it comes up uh, and you you're really not looking at anything like uh, you know sometimes uh, in your audience some people may have heard of the word of uh, frack or fracking or hydraulic fracturing which is not something that we would ever look at and nor is it necessary with this result uh, so look it's uh, it's it's a really pleasing uh, thing and to get that flow rate of uh, 821,000 cubic feet per day uh, for a, quite a shallow well. Uh, so we, we haven't drilled uh, that deep in terms of, uh, say, into, into the, the oil and gas space, 2,200 feet. And to get that rate at that depth uh, is extremely encouraging. So, uh, uh, you know, that was based on a, on a flow test. So we did multiple flow tests. Uh, they were going for six hours each. And uh, we got up to, you know, one of the uh, tests there, we got this rate. And what we're seeing is also is that the, the 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 flow rate was increasing as well. So really, it's a it's a great achievement. So that's sort of the, the flow rate the maximum you mentioned eight hundred twenty one thousand cubic feet. Is that a, a number that's on the market kind of uh, expecting, or is that is a sort of is that a wide at ballpark? Uh, what was the market expecting? Hard to judge expectations, <laughs> but certainly from from our point of view, it's it's great. I mean, firstly, you know, big sigh of relief that it's naturally flowing up to surface. So that's a big one. Uh, to be just short of a million cubic feet a day, I mean, that's that's quite a decent number. It, it really is. And uh, once again, you know, th that shallow depth. Um, so so really, with it, what we're looking at is that um, we with all the data that we have. Uh, there's a very good feeling that the, the helium bearing horizon, uh, this reservoir, uh, actually persists deeper. So it goes back to that earlier comment I made of being quite conservative with this first well, replicating the original discovery. And so that's been achieved. But if we look at, say, the seismic data that we've gathered in particular, that's showing that the area of interest that we've really just sort of kissed the top of it and that uh, going down deeper could be, uh, you know, you know, yield potential more helium bearing uh, horizons and also you know the deeper that you go uh the the greater the pressure and therefore the the, the the anticipated flow rate as well so whilst we're already off to you know a brilliant start with an extremely high helium concentration uh you know i, I really do think it's just the tip of the iceberg yeah and then is that there uh, is just new, yeah it is that the new <laughs> that Results from the produced gas confirm the concentrations between 8.7 to 14.5% helium. So this is just uh, uh, confirming what you had before, right? 
Yeah, so what we did is we were taking samples there as, as we were doing our testing. So over the last couple of weeks, uh, there's four different laboratories that we've sent samples to. Um, so there'll be a more detailed analysis coming out later. But really from this first lot of results, uh, sharing it with the market more or less in real time is uh, saying, okay, well, look, this is definitely within the range that we've been speaking about in the past. So the the original discovery rate was 10.5% helium. With the testing that we did when we were drilling, we we're getting 13.8% helium. Uh, now with this latest one, we're getting up to 14 and a half. Uh, so it really goes to show that it's it's sort of, you know, between that sort of 8.7, 14.5. So, you know, somewhere around that sort of 10% mark, uh, which is extremely high high concentration. Uh, it's, it's quite remarkable, in fact. So really pleasing to see that that's uh, you know that 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 high concentration is uh, is confirmed. Great, uh, and finally, it uh, also sets the CO two concentration at exceeding seventy percent have the potential to contribute to this sort of project economics. What what does it really mean? Why is it really significant to for investors to know? Yeah, look, CO two is an interesting one. Like uh, you know, originally it's like okay, CO two. So you know, the, the the obvious thing with that one is that you know we could re inject it into the reservoir. Uh, but there's CO2 and then there's CO2. So if we think of it from an, an emissions point of view, is that that CO2 is, uh, it's very dirty CO2. So you've got things like ash content, uh, then you've got all sorts of uh, acid gases and so on there. So, you know, H2S and so on uh, as well. So really for the, the CO2 that's in this well, it's, it's, a, it's more or less pure CO2. And uh, the USA and many other places on the planet uh, have had a CO2 shortage for the past couple of years. Uh, so the price has gone up quite significantly. Uh, it, it's now uh, in the US uh, higher than the price for natural gas. And uh, it's all on the back of this shortage. So CO2 is something which is used readily in, in a lot of different applications. So those being for, say, potable water to change the pH level uh, for, uh, for food uh, in terms of uh, you know preserving shelf life. Uh, and then obviously for, for carbonated drinks as well. And, uh, you know, there's always this fun sort of saying that they say in the industry, which is no fizz, no biz. Uh, so, you know, the, 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 the CO2 is something that uh, we are, you know, seriously looking at and it could help uh, alleviate uh, the shortage and uh, of which Minnesota uses quite a bit of CO2 as well. So, uh, no, it, it has the potential to be a nice value add. Yeah, it's really good knowledge for the investors to know about this. So... Now you completed the flow test, and so what's next for Pulsar Helium? Yeah, so with all this data that we've got, uh, it's now being sent off. It's being reviewed by independent experts. Uh, and then the really the, the big one that's coming up is, so, you know, the key things are, so helium concentration, right? We know, we know that uh, the helium's there. It's very high concentration. Flow rate, we know that we've got natural flow rate there. So that's great. It's coming up to surface. Uh, we know that there's blue sky there. So in terms of, you know, at depth, and then also it appears to be laterally extensive as well from the, the, the data we've collected, the geophysics. Uh, uh, and then, you know, giving all that information across to Sproul, which is our independent resource evaluator. Uh, then they'll be crunching the numbers. And then the next big element is, okay, what's the volume? So what is the, the estimation for the gas in place and the prospective and contingent resource? And uh, so that's something that uh, we're sharing with them. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, there's a level of expectation that we should get that. You know, if it's not next month, it'll be soon thereafter. So uh, they'll be hard at work at it. So uh, that's the, the next piece in the puzzle. And uh, then after that, uh, we have the, the volume calculation. And, uh, you know, should it be, uh, you know, where we sincerely hope it will be. And then after that, we go off to the next phase, which is really then starting to look at, you know, what are the economic scenarios here and uh, what other activities uh, need to be uh, conducted on surface to realize its true potential at Topaz. So thank you for your time here today to, to explain this news to us. Uh, I'm certainly, well, uh, we'll be looking forward to the next announcement that we can talk more about for sure. 100%. Always look forward to it, Gilbert. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Cheers.